Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Greens Farms Church online for the last Sunday of the year. Uh, I'm going to invite you as we begin this morning uh, to think about something uh, throughout the service. It'll be a theme that you hear often uh, as we talk and sing and, and pray together. What I want you to do is as you think back and look back on 2020, what are the things that you are thankful for? Think of it as a rearview mirror, if you will, on the past year. And also as you look forward to 2021, what are the things you are hoping for? Or in the words of our call to worship, what are the things you are dreaming of? Those are wonderful questions to help start our time together. And now let me invite Becky to lead us in our call to worship, a time of prayer and the Lord's Prayer. Through Advent, as we lit our candles, we talked of God's dreams for us and our world. God's dream is not just for the months surrounding Christmas, but for every day that we have in this life. Here on the heels of Christmas, we speak of love, we speak of joy, we speak of candlelight and fireside, we speak of dreams being fulfilled. Here on the heels of Christmas, we are called to speak, for the world needs to hear of God's dream. Let us worship and listen, then let us speak. Let us pray. God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, we know that your fingerprints are all over this world. And we know that those who dream cannot keep silent. So today we pray, give us eyes to see you, give us courage to trust you, and give us lips to speak of you in our midst. Gratefully, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All beautiful the march of days as seasons come and go. The hand that shaped the rose has formed the crystal of the snow, has sent the silver frost of heaven, the flowing waters sealed, and laid a silent loveliness on hill and wood and field. O'er brilliant fields of sparkling snow, the radiant morns unfold. The solemn splendors of the night burn brightly through the cold. Life mounts in every pulsing vein, love deepens round the hearth. And clearer sounds the angel hymn, good will to all on earth. Thank you, Bill. That was fantastic. Thank you so much. Well, welcome to the first Sunday after Christmas, the last Sunday of the year. Um, the traditional text that comes to us uh, from for the first Sunday after Christmas is, is the second half of Luke chapter two, after the story of the shepherds and the angels. We're told that the family makes a trip or two to the temple in Jerusalem. And the last thing, the very last thing that we hear about Jesus' infancy uh, is this one uh, simple verse. The child grew and he became strong 
and wise, and the grace of God's favor was upon him. The chapter goes on for one more story about Jesus at 12 years old, but then it closes again with the same summary about Jesus with slightly different words and repeats the same idea. We're told that Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and people. And these are two of my favorite verses uh, in scripture. They're obviously similar. They, they may even be a, a repeat of sorts, but they're my favorite because of the three things that are revealed about Jesus in this text. One, we hear that God's grace and favor was with Jesus. We hear that Jesus grew in wisdom. And we also learn that the people around Jesus saw something special about him. He grew in favor with all the people, we are told. And while certainly in a very different way, I want you to understand that right up front, these are things that can also be said as followers of Jesus about us as we continue our faith journey, as we continue to grow in grace. So not only is uh, that verse one of my favorite texts in scripture, this is also one of my favorite, favorite Sundays to preach. After Christmas, the last Sunday of the year, and technically, as you all know, if you've been going to church for any amount of time, this is a Sunday that typically falls to an associate minister. So I get to preach this uh, time of year a lot. I, I think maybe one of the reasons it's my favorite is because I can remember the first sermon I ever preached was a first Sunday sermon of the year. So this time of year has a lot of great memories uh, for me. And this is the traditional time of looking back, of making resolutions. Um, but uh, I'm sorry, the traditional time of looking ahead and making resolutions, but it is also a great time to look back, to reflect on the year and to take stock of the year, which is why I chose a second verse for today from Psalm 90, verse 12. The psalmist writes, teach us to number our days rightly so that we may gain a heart of wisdom. And there's that idea again of wisdom and how Jesus grew in wisdom and how we can grow in wisdom as well. And wisdom literature is one of my favorite genres in the scripture and typically is about how to get through life successfully, how to live wisely and rightly. But in this verse, I think there's an implication as well. There's an implication that our days are brief. Some translators even say, uh, even translate this verse, teach us how short our lives are. And that's a thought or sentiment that's echoed in other scriptures, uh, other scripture texts as well. In Psalm 144, we are reminded that our lives are like a breath and our days are like a passing shadow. In Psalm 39, we read that our lives are like clouds that pass away quickly. And in Ecclesiastes, that great wisdom book uh, in the Hebrew Testament, we're reminded that the sun rises and sets just as generations come and go. The end of the year um, generally, and the last Sunday of the year specifically, also reminds me of a classic uh, Tony Campolo sermon illustration. If you were any, anywhere around a Christian high school or college or church in the late 70s or 80s or early 90s, you, you may know who Tony Campolo is, and you may be even uh, familiar with this illustration. But he quotes a study that asks 50 people over the age of 95 what they would do differently if they had a chance to live life over again. And the top answer to that question was that people would reflect more 
on the life that they have lived and reflect more on it while they were living it. Some people answered that they would, and I love this phrase, stop, think, and consider with intensity the things they took for granted the first time around. Stop, think, and consider with intensity the things they took for granted the first time around. Campolo comments and says, people fail to focus on or reflect upon the things that have real personal significance. And he warns us that, that life should not be lived as just a meaningless passage of time. And what he does to further illustrate uh, this study and highlight the importance of reflecting is uh, quote a scene from the movie uh, or the play, Our Town. And I know we've uh, perhaps have a, a number of folks who are familiar with that play and that story. Um, the main character uh, is given a chance to relive her 12th birthday. And seeing that her family doesn't fully appreciate the moment that they are in, she kind of breaks that fourth wall convention, turns to the audience and says, do any human beings ever realize life while they live it? Every, every minute. That's a, such a great question and a great end of the year question for us to reflect on as well. Campolo says that if given the chance to do things over again, people would treasure every moment, every memory made, Every life experience is an opportunity to be joyful. And I think this is the perfect time of year to do just that, to decide to treasure every moment. Take nothing for granted. Celebrate life each and every day to grow in wisdom by numbering our days rightly. Now, I could very easily say, eh, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. You are dismissed. Be because that's a great lesson in and of itself. But I think we have to ask ourselves, what does that look like? How do we do that? And so think back for a minute to that opening exercise that we shared together. As we look back and reflect on 2020, a year literally like no other year in our lifetime. What did we learn? What became valuable to us? What became insignificant to us? I'll tell you what it was for me. Uh, for me, what became insignificant? I probably have enough t-shirts in my closet. I do not need any more t-shirts and probably sneakers. I've got enough sneakers. Um, what became more valuable? I learned that I really, really miss not being able to see my family, my family in New Jersey, my family in Texas. It's nice to see them on Zoom, but it's just not the same. I live two hours uh, from my family in New Jersey and, and probably a, a couple days drive or a, a plane trip to see my family in Texas. But obviously it's been tough to travel as we all know. So what are the things that we learned? What are the things that became valuable? What are the things that became insignificant? I think it's our emotional, our intellectual, and our spiritual rear view mirror that can help us be mindful of the passing of time, to cherish every moment. And it's our windshield, our front facing windshield that can help inspire us for the future and dream God's dream as Becky said in our call to worship, as well as help us enjoy the present moment, not get distracted by the present moment because life because. goes on and on and on. The hymns 
uh, can also help us do that. Our first one today was from a section of the hymnal called Changing Seasons. It's a great little section of the hymnal uh, that looks at nature and follows the progress of the year. All beautiful, the march of days, as seasons come and go. What a great, great reminder that seasons will come and go. I wish we could do all of the hymns from, from that section, but here's just a, a, a brief sampling. In the cold and snow of winter, there's a spring that waits to be, unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. And here's another. Praise God for this summer rain, feeding day and night, the grain. Praise God for the tiny seed holding all the world shall need. Wonderful, wonderful reminders of the way life and time marches on season to season to season. And this final one is fabulous as well. Now greet the swiftly changing year with joy and penitence sincere. Rejoice, rejoice, and with thanks embrace another year of grace. As we look back over the year and reflect, and as we look forward to next year and make our resolutions, I know it's a challenge to stay focused and mindful, living in the present, treasuring every moment. As Tony Campolo says, to stop, think, and consider with intensity the opportunity to reflect on life. We, fall, we all fall into distraction, and I know that I am guilty of it as well. It's so easy to get carried up with the mundane, right? And have it shift our focus from what's really, really important. But there's one thing that oftentimes helps me stay focused. There is a memorable, powerful closing scene in the recent remake of True Grit. I don't know if you were True Grit fans growing up, John Wayne, Rooster Cogburn, Maddie Ross. It's a wonderful, wonderful story. There was a remake done uh, not too long ago. And in the haunting final line, a grown up Maddie Ross, who was a kid throughout the movie, is seen walking away from a cemetery after visiting the final resting place of her friend Rooster Cogburn, who saved her life when she was a child. And she takes a moment to reflect on her life and says simply this, time just gets away from us. That is powerful. When we remember that time just gets away from us. So mindful of life's brevity, the, the shortness of our time, as you look not only forward to a new year and a better new year in 2021, and as you look back, what would you do differently if you had your life to live over? What would you change if you had to answer that survey that Tony Campolo mentioned. And I ask because maybe that could be your resolution. You don't need to have a do-over. You can change right now. You can reflect more starting today. Decide to live differently from this day forward, being more mindful, more caring, more giving, numbering your days rightly. So if COVID, if Zoom, if lockdowns and quarantines have taught us anything, I think it's this. 
to cherish our family and friends and loved ones, not to take them or anything for granted, not even the silly stuff like toilet paper. Don't take any of it for granted. And there's a verse from our final hymn that reminds us that God's presence is always with us, especially as we look forward to a new and better 2021. Oh God who gives the winter's cold as well as summer's joyous rays, us warmly in your love enfold and keep us through life's wintry days. Let's pray. God, we are grateful for another year. Even though it was painful, a year in which we were reminded of what is truly, truly important. May we learn to cherish every moment, even the difficult ones, so that instead of despair, chaos, bitterness or indifference, we might learn to choose hope, peace, joy, and love. Amen. In the bleak midwinter, frosty wind made moan. Earth stood hard as iron, water like a stone. Snow had fallen, snow on snow, snow on snow. In the bleak midwinter long ago, our God, heaven cannot hold him, nor earth sustain. Heaven and earth shall flee away when he comes to reign in the bleak midwinter a stable place sufficed the lord god almighty jesus christ what can i give him, poor as I am. If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what I can I give? him give my heart brothers and sisters the psalmist encourages us to number our days aright that we may gain a heart of wisdom and in the gospel of luke we learn that jesus grows in wisdom in stature and that God's grace and favor was with him. So as you look back in the rear view mirror at 2020 and look ahead through the windshield at 2021, may God's favor and grace be with you as well, bringing you hope, peace, joy, love, and wisdom. Amen. Happy New Year. Go in peace.